Hey everybody, welcome back. Today's going to be an ambitious one and it's a great day because today's going to be the day that you learn how to play Crossroads uh, by Cream. Um, legendary Eric Clapton on guitar. Uh, was released as part of their 1968 Wheels of Fire album. We've all heard it a million times if you're sort of into the whole classic rock thing. And, you know, this is just Eric at Prime Eric. It's my favorite Eric. It's Gibson era Eric. And um, uh, just so much greatness in here. And this song is one of those that, you know, you just sort of rip and in A minor pentatonic mostly, uh, and it all works, but I never really sat down and learned lick by lick every little thing that he's doing with this song. Um, I've just sort of faked it all my life, really. Um, and I just recently sat down and really listened with fresh ears. And uh, we're gonna go through all of it. I'm gonna break down all of it. And there was so much, lots of surprises, um, and lots of stuff that I thought was not obvious for me. Anyway, we're going to cover all of that, okay? Now, if you haven't done so already and you like this kind of thing, jump down right now, click subscribe, and ring the bell, which is going to let you know when I drop new content, which I do every single week. All my videos have chapters in them, so you can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see and bypass what you don't. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I appreciate that. There's thanks, which is like a button right below, like throwing a tip in the tip jar. Or you can join my Patreon page, where there's chord charts and tabs for all the lessons that I do on YouTube like this and some exclusive content for Patreon members. So all the links are in the description and check it out. All right, so let's get to it. This is Eric Clapton rocking in A. And um, holy crap, what a, there's so much, so much. So let's just get right to it. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the tone. Um, I don't know exactly what guitar he was playing. Um, he was playing Les Pauls, SGs, maybe that Firebird, that single pickup Firebird had snuck into his arsenal by then, but um, not exactly sure which one he used on this record. And I think my Les Paul sounds better um, on this, but I'm gonna go with my SG because there's so much we're gonna do in the super high register. Um, which is just so much easier on this guitar. And I wonder maybe that's maybe he did play the SG on this just because of that. Um, so for tone, this is pretty much Gibson into Marshall, crank the knobs and go <laughs> pretty much. But uh, so I've got uh, SG bridge pickup. I've rolled the tone back, not all the way. You know, he does that woman tone thing where he rolls the tone back all the way, but this, um, there's still some clarity to it. So it's around sort of on my guitar, it's sort of at around five, four or five. Um, I'll show that I'll have all the settings for uh, what I got going on with my 50 watt plexi reissue. And there's a little bit going on here, pushing that signal. All of that stuff will be down in the description below if you're curious about um, what I got going on for signal chain, but really not much. Um, and so the net result is So that's the sort of sound that I got going on. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the sort of main riff first. Obviously the song is an A um, and it's a one, four, five blues progression. Your one chord is your A, your four chord is a D or really more of a D seven and your five chord is an E. Um, but uh, the main riff is, you probably know this one already. That's sort of that piece. And then he harmonizes with the second string. To your D7. This is actually the intro to the song. And then there's a little turnaround riff where he comes out of that, where he'll slide up to the seventh fret um, on the A string. Now we're in this A minor pentatonic position, right? Beautiful, right? 
Um, so everything is clearly in that A minor pentatonic. Um, and all he does is he sneaks in a little major, the major third, um, throughout um, to sort of play between the major and minor thing, which is a lot of the magic in the blues playing and a lot of the magic of what Eric does. Um, so slowly one time. Landing on that E note for our turnaround. And then the verses are chugging along. Then your riff. And from this point on throughout the rest of the song, it sort of alternates between whether he's picking that note every time or he's doing a pull off. You know, and it sounds great. Um, sort of either way you do it, but it's kind of fun to mix it in because sometimes you can hear him really digging in and picking it. And to my ear, he's got this weird sort of, it's like he's doing a pre-vibrato thing or something. Um, it's almost like he's a little sharp on that note, like on that part. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but um, give that a listen. Let me know if you're hearing that too. Anyway, that's, so that's the whole sort of verse structure in, you know, for the rest of the song. So I'm not going to spend more time on that. Um, it's all in first position um, with your A. And sometimes when it comes back uh, after the E chord, when he comes back to the four chord on the D, I sometimes hear that, that F sharp note on there. All right, so let's get to the stuff. This is why you, I'm sure, clicked on this video because let's talk about the solo, right? Now, one thing I'll tell you is on this lesson, there's probably going to be a little bit less of the chord chart stuff, um, you know, the note by note over my shoulder than in some of my other videos. There's just so many notes, people. Oh, my gosh. Um, so I'm going to zoom in and um, I'll play the thing slowly. You can use the little speed control on YouTube, you know, if you want, if you want to slow it down even further. Um, but uh, there's that. And, uh, you know, I'll have this broken out on, on tablature for my Patreon members, although it'll probably take me several days after I get this together. Um, but it'll be there. So there you go. Okay, so there's, I think of it in three sections. Um, there's actually two spots within the song where he's, soloing the first one um, which we'll do here in just a second um, and then it goes back to a verse and then he does sort of two rounds of you know however many measures of the solo so i'm breaking them into three parts um, so the first part um, we're going to start down here on um, in first position and it's going to start in a major pentatonic um, and it's going to kick off like this <laughs> That's on, on the, on the uh, A, the one chord. And then when it goes to the D, the four chord. Whoops. Love that. Um, I don't know if that was a mistake note or, or not that he hit that one. Slid into it. There is no wrong note, right? You just slide into the right note. I just had to run through it all. It's like muscle memory once you start it. Um, so let's break that down a little bit. So again, we started on major. Because we're sliding up to this position now. Just right in that pentatonic box. Bend. You're 
sliding up to that that A seventh there. So that's just a and almost Chuck Berry kind of thing. Now we're in our higher box, right? And that's where he's sliding up to that. Love that. And then our turnaround. So one thing that I noticed after diving deep on all of this is there's almost no time when he does this. It's, it's never that. It's, he's really picking, you know, not picking every note, but it's rather than, and I always thought there was so much and there's not, and there's not. Um, there's a point later on where he does it a, a bunch of times up top, but even then, that was this one spot where he does it, and the rest of it, it's picking it. So the, the sort of um, motif that is uh, happening throughout the song, this sounds so stupid to say this, this is blues rock, and don't overthink it, right? But, but there is sort of a repeated thing that he does throughout, which is this, or a variation of this. On the on the turnaround, right? But it's that. And I also noticed that a note that's not there that I always thought was in there, because many of us when we play blues scales were something like that. That note. He doesn't play that note. Like I think maybe never in this solo does he play that note. Someone's going to jump on me in the comments, but there may be one spot, maybe, where he sneaks that in up here. But it's really on that G string, that's really, it's that, those two notes in the box, whether it's up there or up here, is that he's doing. It's really, it's never that, and it's never... That's never happening, which was a big surprise for me, okay? Um, right, so that final turnaround. Now he's going to switch up to this position, okay? And you can hear him do that. You hear that little sneak because he's coming up to this next position. And that next position is A minor, pentatonic. Think of it up here at the around your, you know, 12th fret. That. Right, so that's now your A minor pentatonic up here. Right, and we're gonna solo around up there, right? So he comes up. Which I love that, it's like flirting with, you know, in between the major and the minor. Like if he went to, if he got there, it would be fully major, but he, I don't think he ever really does, but he comes close, right? That was a cool little thing. Then you're going to come back to it. Unison. That was great. So those two together. And then back to this again. That was all minor, and now we're going to flip to major to close it out. And then minor down here. Right? So that second part.
Here you go, now you're back to your verse. Go on down to Rodin. Right, going in there. All right, let me see if I can run down this whole first part. That's fun. That's just fun, right? And then it goes back to the verse, and then it comes back, and we're going to do solo section number two, and the energy's going to kick up um, a bit. So let's move on to section number two. So section number two is going to start way up here on our 17th fret. This is your A minor um, slash major, I guess, pentatonic box up here um, on the 17th, just like we were there. We're going to be up there um, kicking this off. So it kicks off. Remember I said but there's not a lot of places where it's doing that bending. This is the place where it does. And he does this four times to kick it off. Right? Four times and then bend into it. the first riff holy cow that's great ginger break baker starts kicking in with the snare every time um and him and eric just start grooving um at that spot it's magic man um so after that again flirting with that minor to major then we're going to our four chord That was great. That's like a pre-bend. That right there. It's not this. It's not... It's... You might even... <laughs> I went sharp there, but you get the idea. And he does this sort of just, I don't know if it's a filler or a time killer while he's thinking about the next thing he's going to do, um, but he just is just riffing off of this. And then he goes over to the, does the same thing, one string back. And he hits that open A string. Alright, so that whole part in context. I think I hit that forbidden note. Anyway, um, just beautiful, right? Um, then he's going to go to major. And now it's minor, but that little thing to kick it off. All right, so just playing with that A note. hear that part. Now you're going to do a two-step bend. Um, 
you're on your A chord right now and you're moving to your D chord. Um, and the note that he's going to go to is this note. Right? That's the major third of your D, your four chord. But he's going to stay on that third string and he's just going to bend up to it super fast. And then hammer on that D. Right? That big bend. Now he's going to play with this little riff. So that is just up here. And then this one. You've heard that a million times, and I'm pretty sure this is the song where that, where that came from, where we all learned it. All right, now he kicks off the third section of the solo with more of this super, you know, trying to kick up the energy one more time. Um, just does a couple of those, and then he's going to get, you're going to grab the, the uh, uh, what is that? That's the 19th fret on the third and the second string. And you're just going to bend it up sort of a half step. Just great. Do a couple of more of those, and then we come back to. have to keep going. I <laughs> can't stop. All right, so let's kick that off again. See that again? That's that motif. Major. Minor. And that's how that one ends. Man, that is a workout. Holy cow. Okay, but uh, once again, let's see if I can... See if I can do this at speed or close to speed now. Um, let's do section two. Whoops. Okay, I lost my place. Uh, <laughs> Almost got all the way through it. All right. Cool. So then you're in your last verse. Tell my friend poor Willie Brown. Tell my friend poor Willie Brown. I'm standing at the crossroads. Believe I'm sinking down. 
This last riff, I believe is right there. You could also do it up here. Like that, but I think it's open. A7, pick your spot, either here or here. And then there's a little rip that he does at the very end. Which I think is, is super fun. He hits that, that last sort of note is, uh, is an open E string and an open A string together, but he does that Again, like kind of that little motif that he put throughout the whole song. It's like that. Something like that. All right, well that was my attempt at Crossroads. Um, I hope you learned something new. I know I did when I was sitting down with this and uh, wood shedding with it, so. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, and if you haven't done so already and you like what you saw, um, click subscribe, helps me a lot, and ring the bell, because the bell will tell you every time I drop new content, um, which I do every week. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this. And if there's another song you want me to take on and do similar, um, love to hear that idea. But uh, until next week, take care, everybody. <laughs>